Hey boys and girls, it's Shredler here. I'm going to be doing a read aloud with you today for your listening comprehension skills. I know you're not able to respond to me because you're just watching the video, but as I ask questions, I want you to think about the answers and I will um, allow time for you to think about that and then I'll discuss the answers with you. In our story today, the there's a character that is a little boy and he has a great musical talent. You probably already know some terms related to music, like keyboard and notes and melody, but some words that you may not know are oblong, pitch, prodigy, and composer. So oblong is when something has um, two long sides and two short sides, kind of like a rectangle, but it just means it's stretched out. So it may not have straight sides, but it's stretched out. Pitch is someone who is on pitch can sing or play music notes correctly. I know that you probably have heard someone singing and it sounds like they're not quite on the pitch. It sounds a little off from what you're used to hearing. Or you hear a note and then someone tries to match that note and it doesn't quite match up. So that's talking about pitch. Then Prodigy is someone who is young but has a great natural ability for something such as music. Okay, so you might be a basketball player prodigy meaning that even at a very very young age you were just phenomenal surprisingly phenomenal at basketball or maybe you are a um I'm trying to think of another one like Tiger Woods is considered a golf prodigy because he was excellent at golf at a very young age of two or three years old um so a prodigy is whenever you're good at something naturally and then a composer is a person who writes music. All right, the genre of this story is called Michael's Melody. The genre is realistic fiction. And if you remember, realistic fiction is a made up story because we know fiction is make believe, but it is something that could really happen. So even though it's not real, it's not based on real characters, there could be people that really do those things. So as we are reading, I want you to listen to find out what happens to Michael and his melody or song. And I want you to listen carefully for context clues that will help you determine the meanings of any unfamiliar words. I want you to listen to how I read. It will be fluid and not choppy, and that's how you need to read, and it'll have expression, so listen to the way that I read. So I want you to be active, doing active listening listening to be ready to respond to any questions that I ask okay all right I'm gonna read Michael's melody thanks again everybody for the awesome presence it was Michael Adams birthday and his family had gathered to celebrate Michael had just opened his final gift a striped sweater from his grandmother frankly he was pretty sure that his pile of gifts this year was a lot less exciting than usual but he was too polite to let his disappointment show. As Michael's brother began clearing away dirty dishes and discarded wrapping paper, their father stood up and headed toward the hall closet. Hold on a minute, said Mr. Adams with a twinkle in his eye. I think we may have forgotten a gift. That probably has happened to you before where you thought you were done with your presents and you weren't too excited and then your parents said, oh wait, I think there's one more. And they had this surprise gift. When his dad returned with a large oblong box, remember oblong means stretched out, Michael knew immediately what was inside. It was the professional keyboard he'd been asking for all year. So here's a picture to give you an example of his keyboard right there. I'm not good with this camera. All right. So how does Michael know what's inside the box? What do you think gives him the clue of what, what, what was in there? Think about that. So I'm thinking that it was because of the shape of the box. It was long and oblong and that helped him know that there was something large in there. Also, he had been wielding the keyboard for a while and his family knew that it was his birthday and this was like his last special gift. So I think he put all that together and guessed that it was the keyboard. 
Why was Michael disappointed before his father went to the closet? Okay, so like we talked about, it was because he's been waiting for that keyboard and he thought he wasn't going to get it, so he was disappointed. And then here his dad is and he appears with it and that made him happy. Michael's parents claimed that he'd been born with a tune in his head and it was true that he had always loved music. At an early age, Michael showed exceptional talent for making music. Michael could hear a song just once and repeat the melody accurately and on pitch. Accurately. He could repeat it accurately and on pitch. That, mean he was, that means he was doing it right. His talent was something of a mystery to the rest of his family. Your father can't carry a tune in a bucket, and neither can I, his mother often claimed, and Michael had to admit she was right. Michael's parents were eager to nurture his abilities, and so over time, they'd given him dozens of toy instruments. When he reached kindergarten, his parents presented Michael with an, ele an electronic keyboard, which was perfect for a five-year-old prodigy. But now that Michael was in fourth grade, he was ready for something much more professional. Why does the author look back in time in the middle of the birthday party? Why does the author go back a little to when he was young and tell us about that? All right, so it will be so that we can understand that Michael has this talent for music that started at a young age, that he was a prodigy in music. Why is Michael's talent a mystery to his families? Why, why is it so surprising and strange to his families? To his family. Because they don't have any musical talent. They can't sing, and they do not have this talent that he got, so they're kind of surprised and want, curious where it came from. Thank you so much, Mom and Dad, he exclaimed, grinning at his gleaming brand new professional keyboard. Are you going to play it in the talent show, Michael? Asked his sister. The school's annual talent competition was coming up in a few weeks. Obviously, Michael replied. Michael and his friends had invented a game called Pop Challenge. Somebody would hum a popular song and Michael would play it back on his keyboard. Pop Challenge was one idea for the talent show with the audience providing the challenges. But with the new keyboard in front of him, Michael felt inspired to challenge himself. Playing familiar songs was easy, but maybe it was time to write his own song. He'd been working on one for months, and with this keyboard, Michael could bring it to life. Why does Michael feel inspired to challenge himself? Think about that. Michael wants to do well at the talent show and show his musical talents to the best of his ability and his new keyboard will help him to do that. So he's got this new keyboard now and he really just thinks he can do even better stuff than what he had done before. On the day of the talent show, Michael felt jittery. He was used to playing for an audience, but he'd never performed an original composition. Would the other kids like his melody? Or would they prefer to hear songs they already knew? So what do you think jittery means? So it's the day of the talent show. He's feeling jittery. He doesn't know if they're going to like his music. So jittery is probably nervous. Okay, nervous. Um, and it says that he's never performed an original composition. Remember, original means that there's nothing like it. So... This and we already know that he had not written his own music before, so original composition would mean his own work, something that he came up with. Michael's performance went smoothly, and the audience clapped and cheered, but that didn't necessarily mean anything. It was pretty much a talent show rule that you had to applaud everyone. Finally, the show ended, and the principal came on stage to announce the winners. Third prize went to Khalid Wilson 
for his comedy routine. Khalid's jokes were hilarious. Amelia Bennett got second prize for her pet tricks. They were cool, but bringing a cute fluffy dog on stage seemed like an unfair advantage. Because everybody likes pets. Principal Mendez prepared to announce first prize, and the winner is... Michael held his breath. Michael Adams! Yes, Michael's face flushed with pride as he walked to the front of the stage to collect his trophy. Winning the talent show was an amazing end to a great day, but it was just the beginning, beginning of Michael's budding career as a composer. From the last line of the story, what do you predict will happen to Michael? I'll read that sentence again. But it was just the beginning of Michael's budding career as a composer. So that gives you a prediction for the future. That he's going to grow up and continue to compose music, be a professional composer, and write music the rest of his life. What was the author's purpose for including this last line? Why do you think that the author included that last line? The author wanted to show that this story was just the beginning of a lifetime career in music for Michael. Okay, so um, I think that's all. I'm just checking over my notes to make sure there's nothing else I wanted to say to you. Okay, so that's a little bit about author's purpose and a little bit about um, practicing for listening to comprehend. And yeah, I will talk to you later. All right, bye.